all, this is Dr. Mubin Sayed. Welcome to one more show. So this discussion about the California's law, which some called as a disciplining the doctors against misinformation and disinformation. Others called it as interfering with the free speech of a doctor between a doctor and a patient. I actually think it was an interference and it was horrible to try to get between the doctor and a patient. So here is the follow up. The follow up is that uh, <clears throat> the law was passed in January. Within the same month, it got uh, challenged as well. And the judge put a halt on it. And it has been in the court since then. And finally, without further moving in the court, uh, Governor Newsom just repealed it. So let's look at it together. I'm just going to quickly share my screen. So here is the law. <clears throat> And I have done a couple of talks. If I have the links in the description for those talks as well, here is the law. This is the Assembly Bill Number 2098. And I have done these discussions before. Let's just quickly look at it. Again, it has been repealed. But check out, if you have not seen before, the reach of this law. And something that had made my blood boil in the past was that there was a uh, an article in a newspaper last time when, when I discussed where the California Medical Board was actually said to have been asking for more restrictions than what is applied here. It was said that California Medical Board wanted the freedom of asking a doctor and a patient's complete record to review if there was a misconduct in there any time. They wanted to see the whole history of the interaction and to be able to then review that to decide for the license. And it is not that the lawmaker said, you know what, this is just such a horrible thing. You should not do this. In fact, the lawmaker's statement was that we have asked them to wait let us get this step approved and then later on we will add your demands in it as well. This is how aggressive and um, I have lots of things to say, but I'm going to reserve that. So let's look at the law. Assembly Bill number 2098, Physicians and Surgeons, Unprofessional Conduct. Existing law provides for the licensure and regulation of physicians and surgeons by the Medical Board of California and the Osteopathic Medical Board of California. Existing law requires the applicable board to take action against any licensed physician and surgeon who is charged with unprofessional conduct as provided. So think about it. Keep this in, in your mind if you did not listen to my previous talks. Imagine a doctor and a patient talking and imagine a patient saying, is there any treatment for COVID other than the vaccines? Just this one simple innocent question. And the doctor has the fear of God in him put in by, the, by this law that he should not utter something that the patient can go and report and the doctor would lose the license. Similarly, when a patient asks a question where they actually have a curiosity that what are the possibilities, what are various things that have done about COVID, doctor is not going to tell. Imagine the distrust between them. The doctor is thinking, will the patient go and make some false statement about me that I said this or I said that? Patient is thinking, is the doctor openly going to talk with me about the possible solutions? They both cannot trust each other in the presence of this law. 
which is now repealed. So now it has become they both could not. There is another bad thing in this one. California became the first state to do this kind of a Orwellian and draconian thing. And then there was a fear that other states would look at it and start following in the same footsteps. A bad precedence was started. So let's see. The bill would designate the dissemination of misinformation or disinformation related to the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus or COVID-19 as unprofessional conduct. The bill would also make findings and declarations in this regard. Section one, the legislature finds and declares all of the following. The global spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus has claimed the lives of 600, uh, 6 million people. Data from the federal CDC shows that unvaccinated individuals are at a risk of dying from COVID-19. That is 11 times greater than those who are fully vaccinated. The safety and efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines have been confirmed through evaluation by the Federal Food and Drug Administration, and the vaccine continues to undergo intensive safety monitoring by the CDC. The spread of misinformation and disinformation about COVID-19 vaccines has weakened public confidence and placed lives at risk, at serious risk. Major news outlets have reported that some of the most dangerous pro propagators of inaccurate information regarding the COVID-19 vaccines are licensed healthcare professionals. So this is their, their information. The lawmakers source of news to make this decision is the other newsrooms. And because of that, I actually have a few news outlets here as well to show you their bias. So the Federation of State Medical Boards has released a statement warning the physicians who engage in the dissemination of the COVID-19 vaccine misinformation or disinformation risk losing their medical license and that physicians have a duty to provide their patient with accurate scientific based information. This is such an oxymoronic statement because if a doctor does have, I'll give you an example. Nowadays, when we started with the COVID time, we talked about COVID um, cytokine storms. These are in my videos. If you go back three years, you will watch me discussing cytokine storms. You'll, you'll see me discussing the COVID, SARS-CoV-2, causing diabetes, causing cardiovascular issues, causing neurological issues, causing anosmias, causing brain shrinkage, causing uh, hypertension, and so on, and with mechanisms. A few days ago, I did a talk about vaccine. So vaccine side effects are becoming apparent now because there are studies now. These could not be. Yes, people claim that I knew it before, but the scientific studies are coming out now. So of course, I'm going to discuss them. So I discussed some study to which somebody said, Dr. Mubin is an anti-vaxxer. And somebody else said, no, he's not an anti-vaccine guy. He has talked about the vaccines and the SARS-CoV-2 as well. And this guy said, well, he's talking about hypertension with the vaccines. Why doesn't he say that hypertension can occur from SARS-CoV-2 as well? And I have done ample discussions. Actually, more mechanisms I have discussed with SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and its effect on uh, ACE2. The point is, what is the science? What is factual science? We are seeing clearly CDCs and FDAs all over the place. And they have been, they are wrong in so many places. Some they admit and some they don't. Just look at masks, a very simple thing like mask, and look at their turns on that. So one day that science would say, according to the CDCs and FDAs, that masks work. The other day the science would say it would, does not work. What will be the truth then? And the doctor has to just keep going back and forth. So this is such a oxymoronic statement to say that they have to provide the accurate science-based information. Yes, allow them to provide that accurate and science-based information. 
in-house resolution number 74 of the 2021-22 regular session, the California State Assembly declared the health misinformation to be a public health crisis and urged the state of California to commit to appropriately combating health misinformation and curbing the spread of falsehood that threaten the health and safety of Californians. This is a common thing in these authoritarian behaviors that they do it in your name. They would say we are doing for your protection or we are doing for the national security. These are the two excuses while they are doing something horrible. So check this out. For purpose of this section, I'm reading here now, the following definitions shall apply. Board means the Medical Board of California, the Osteopathic Medical Board of California as applicable. Disinformation means misinformation that the licensed deliberately, licensee deliberately disseminated with malicious intent or an intent to mislead. I do not know how would they prove the intent, but well, they put this definition in there. That is the definition of disinformation. And disseminate means the conveyance of information from the licensee to a patient under the licensee's care in the form of a treatment or advice. Misinformation means false information that is contradicted by contemporary scientific consensus contrary to the standard of care. Contemporary scientific consensus, what they're saying is local authorities, CDCs, FDAs. This is what they were trying to do. They were saying, if you talked will have a right or our patient would have a right to report you to the medical board and they would take your license away. So here is what happened. This doctor, Azade Khatibi and another sued California government. This is the legal or the law firm they hired, Hamilton Lincoln Law Institute. I want to read this for you. It is actually very interesting. So HHLI, the Hamilton Lincoln Law Institute, claims victory. Courage of Hamilton Lincoln Law Institute, clients, doctors, Michael Corris and Michael Fitz, Gibbons, Governor Newsom, and the California State Legislature have conceded defeat and repeal AB 2098. A California state law that restricted doctors' First Amendment free speech rights by threatening disciplinary action against their license for discussing with patients anything about COVID-19 that the state view, views as disinformation or misinformation. On Saturday, September 30, Governor Newsom signed SB 815 into law. That statute included a quietly inserted provision repealing AB 2098, which Governor Newsom signed into law just last year, so AB 2098. AB 2098 deemed it unprofessional conduct for a California licensed physician or surgeon to share disinformation or misinformation related to COVID-19. The statute defined disinformation as contradicted by contemporary, contemporary scientific consensus and covered all topics related to COVID-19, including risks, prevention, treatment, and the safety and effectiveness of vaccines. HLLI representing doctors Corus and Fitzgibbons filed suit challenging AB 2098 as an unconstitutional infringement on the First Amendment right of doctors to engage in unfettered speech to their patients and for patients to hear and ask questions of their doctors. HHLI's case made its way on appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and oral arguments before the court on July 17, 2023, appears to have been a decisive factor in motivating the state legislature 
to repeal AB 2098. During oral arguments, argument, the panel of judges expressed deep skepticism regarding the statute, strongly indicating that the statute did not pass constitutional muster. muster. The July 12, 2023 version of SB 815, that is a law in which the repeal clauses. The July 12, 2023 version of SB 815 did not include the repeal provision. That provision quietly and mysteriously appeared in the September 5 version of the bill shortly before it was finalized and passed by both the state Senate and Assembly and signed by Governor Newsom. At last, the state legislature and government New Governor Newsom have apparently come to recognize that AB 2098 was a dangerously overboard, was a dangerously overboard and deeply flawed infringement on doctors' First Amendment right, as we are thankful to that our client doctors, Corus and Fitzgibbons, had the courage to challenge such an ill-advised statute. I still cannot imagine that they thought that they can place a law between a doctor and a patient. And I remember that when I was reading these articles, at one point, it was written that when this law was presented by the authors or the sponsor and the author, their colleagues were not very comfortable with it. And the authors and sponsors, they said, we are promising that this will not be applied generally, but only in the most egregious cases. So to me, it seemed like they made a weapon and they said, we will decide who to fire with it. That was very Orwellian. That was very animal form like behavior. So now some more news here. This is California COVID-19 misinformation law. So what I would request you to now look at are the headlines and how various news outlets that these lawmakers were so proud of, of following to create the law in light of the news outlets. Let's see how do they talk about it. California COVID-19 misinformation law repealed. So here they use the word misinformation law. California governor Newsom recently repealed a state law that aimed to strictly aim to restrict physicians from providing patients with misinformation about COVID-19 following months of legal challenges. Under the law which took effect on January 1, the Medical Board of California would have been able to revoke the license, licenses of physicians who spread misinformation about the virus. And although Newsom recognized that such a law could affect free speech, it was drafted in a way that left it to the board's interpretation and only would apply to the most egregious instances. Meaning, yes, it is a law, but we would just decide who do we want to kill with it. And that is my interpretation by kill. I mean, the license. You take a doctor's license away, you really just take their career down. Their career will be rolled back to before medicine, whatever they were. This is how horrible this law was. And look, they're saying that, hey, we, are, you, we would only use it in most egregious cases. Despite that, the law was halted by a federal judge the same month it went into effect due to lawsuits filed by physicians looking to overturn the legislation after it was signed into law. A federal judge granted a preliminary injunction against the law on January 25, blocking the state from enforcing it. On September 30, Newsom signed a state Senate bill that repealed the section of the state's business and professions code that contained the misinformation the law which will nullify it next January. So by next January, it will be nullified. Now, this is Liberty Justice Center. California repeals COVID misinformation law, bowing to legal pressure. Bowing to legal pressure, whatever is the correct pronunciation. Uh, California's COVID-19 misinformation law is dead. This is MedPage, California misinfo law is dead.
California law Reuters, California law aiming to curb COVID misinformation blocked by judge. Aiming to curb misinformation. A US judge has blocked a California law that sought to penalize doctors who spread misinformation or disinformation about COVID-19 while he considers a pair lawsuit challenging it on free speech ground. California doctors, so this is San Francisco Chronicles, California doctors who deliver COVID falsehoods no longer committing misconduct. Just, just look at this. These are the media outlets that lawmakers were using to say that, hey, the media is saying that this is a lot of damage happening. You should make a law. And then Fox as well. Newsom, Newsom repeals California law that censored doctors giving COVID-19 care. So it's a very different way of looking at it. In my opinion, it was a First Amendment right. It was a doctor-patient relationship where nobody should have come in the middle of it. In the name of COVID, calling it disinformation or misinformation, or in any name. And medical board had the nerve to say that we would like to see a patient and a doctor's complete history from the day one the patient arrived at that clinic till now. And then we want to see what other misconducts this doctor has done. Imagine the fear and the nervousness they would do. So this is a discussion. Um, <clears throat> all the links that I just showed you, plus my two previous videos links are in the description as well. I would request you to just look at it. It's a good read. Just a few lines here and there. Now I have a question for tomorrow. Would you like me to talk about some concepts, some mechanism tomorrow, or do you want to do a chit chat? Nowadays, every Friday, somebody types a message saying, I miss the chit chats. So would you like to do a chit chat? Usually chit chats are not the greatest for me because they are long and people don't watch them and they just kind of fizzle out and die. But if you would like to have a chit chat tomorrow, I'm happy to have that as well. So just comment and say yes or no. I actually like chit chats because there is a free flow of information and <laughs> And hopefully such laws do not come and stop. And secondly, I don't have to prepare a lot beforehand. So chit chats are fun, but they are less watched. So you have to care for me as well that they, they, they watch less. So YouTube algo thinks, well, this channel is not watched very much and then keeps it down. OK, anyways. Um, Zoom with Luffy. <laughs> I'll see if Luffy can be here. So, all right, this is it. Thank you very much for being here. Please do watch this and tell me, uh, were you in favor of this kind of a law or were you not in favor of it? Or did you stay neutral about it? Do you think other states? I was afraid that other states would do it too. So do you think other sta states should have done it? Paul says we should do chit chat. Uh, absolutely. So I think let's plan for a chit chat tomorrow. And <laughs> with this, uh, please like, subscribe and share. Have a great evening. And I would see you tomorrow. We'll have a chit chat and we'll draw things. Bye bye for now.